Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. So, yeah, that's uh, AI vehicle extension. That's my thoughts with it. I don't generally use it for tractor work because it's not so good. There, there are points where it can be used. If I've got irregular shaped fields and I'm using three, something that's mounted on the three-point links, I will usually set the AI vehicle extension going on the outside rounds of the field. And then I will switch it once I've done a few times around the edge of the field. I'll switch it over and I will use the standard in-game hired help to finish things off. I like the standard in-game hired help. I find it is actually pretty good. And the thing that I like about the AI vehicle extension is it's got very few options. Mostly it's a plug and play situation. You install it, very few options that you've got to worry about and you can just set it going like the standard in-game hired help. The big difference between using the AI vehicle extension and the in-game hired help together is uh, between those and cosplay is that cosplay requires quite a lot of knowledge of how that program works and you've got to do a lot of work to set it all up and that's the bit that i don't like about it that's the that's the the big thing that i don't like about it is how much you've got to do in order to get cosplay to work in the first place it's not a situation of you just come along and press a button that's what happens with the AI vehicle extension. I have it on. It's on automatically. It's control H to switch between that and the standard hired help. Um, if you buy a new machine and you've got the AI vehicle extension installed, it will automatically default to the AI vehicle extension. If you don't want to use it, you press control H. It removes it. And then every time you press H, you've just got the standard hired help. If you want to use it and it's already on, you just press H and it uses that instead of using the standard hired help. That's it. That's all you've got to do. There's nothing else involved if you don't want there to be anything else involved. It's got the automatically it will start with going around the outside edges of the field in a clockwise direction and it will just work like that. And it will keep going like that until you choose to do something a little bit different. If I'm going along here and I press Control H, I've got these on here. I can't turn it on and off at the moment, but I've got that right there. I'll be doing it with the Combine in a minute. Actually, you know what? We'll go and do it with the Combine right now. Um, I've got to go and empty that Combine out. And then we'll switch it over so that it's working up and down the fields. And so you'll be able to see exactly how easy it is to change from going around the outside edge of the field to working up and down the field with it. I know that I'm preaching to the choir a lot here, and most of you are already very familiar with the program and how it works and all its little quirks and, and so on and so forth. So I'm not showing you anything unusual, but anybody that is new to my channel, new to the series, um, and maybe you've not really looked at this program before. Now, I don't know if AI Vehicle Extension is currently on the Mod Hub or not. I don't actually know if it's there available or not. It may be, it may not be, I'm, I'm not really sure. So let me just swing this one on round here. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to switch on to the combine over here. All right, now you can see at the bottom it's got AI vehicle extension. It will have that one up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press... Con I want to change it now. It's going around and around in circles. And I don't want it to go around in circles anymore. I want it to start working up and down the field. So I'm going to press Control H, which is the automatic, the standard control for bringing up the panel here. So I've got that one and I have a mouse cursor come up. Now I can switch it off like that. And that will just switch to the standard in-game AI. And then the standard in-game hired help will take over. And that's something that I do quite often. Or I can do this, which is what I'm going to do with this one. I can press that once. And now this will start moving up and down the field. Now I can switch it again. And I can go that one straight like a normal worker. And that will just stay in dead straight lines working up and down the field without any deviation at all. Whereas if I go here up and down, it's using the AI vehicle extension to work up and down. And the difference between the two is the straight, like a normal worker, will go straight up and down regardless. The AI vehicle extension moving up and down 
anytime there is any movement on the side of the field, um, like there is just down this end, it will follow the edge of the crop. You will find over time in a larger field that it does tend to produce slightly wavy lines. However, if you've got a very large field, if you look at these trailers a minute, I'll show you what I mean. If you have a large, long field that's shaped like that, standard AI is not very good for a field that's shaped like that. I've had fields like this in previous games, but if you look at my tractor there, like in the trailers, like we got that curve. And you all, you've all worked fields like that in, there's a lot of maps that have got them, which aren't just all square fields, right? You have a longish field, but it's got a curve on it, like that. And it can be slightly annoying if you're just using the standard AI, because you can't put long straight lines from one end of the field to the other, right? Straight lines don't work very well in a curve field like that. The AI vehicle extension, however, is absolutely wonderful for that situation right there. It's absolutely brilliant. You've got the setting that I've got on now is work up and down the field. It's not telling it to work up and down the field in straight lines. It's just telling it to work up and down the field. So what it will do is it will follow the line of the field to the end. And then when it goes past a certain amount of turn on the end of the field, uh, it will then decide, right, actually, we do need to turn it round. So it will turn round like it's doing right now, and then it will work back up across the field. But it won't keep dead straight lines. So if you've got that banana-shaped field, like the trailers are here, it will follow the curve of the field from one end to the other. And that's what you will end up with, is you will then end up with all of your, like, if you're leaving the straw out... It will, all those uh, windrows in a straw, it will leave them in a beautiful banana shaped curve all the way from one end of the field to the other. And that is another beautiful thing about AI vehicle extension. That is another thing that I really, really love about it, is all of this is at the touch of a button. I'm, I'm literally, the only two options, I, I press H and everything goes. And when I'm on the combine, I press Control H to bring up my little control panel down here. And all I gotta do is just click that one. There we go. Straight like a normal worker. So that's the standard AI and that will go dead straight. Or I just you, up and down. And it says right there, up and down. And it's not moving straight. You watch that combine and that will follow the slight curve of the crop now. It won't stay in a dead straight line. It will follow the curve of the crop. And it will just keep doing that. And it will work its way up and down the field. So... It, it, it is absolutely great. It will, over a very large field, eventually start to, like, it, it does start to become more irregular as it sort of works its way through the field in different ways. Um, and that can be something of a nuisance for some people. Some people don't really like that. Uh, but that's why it's got the option to go straight like a normal worker. Or you can just do what I often do, which is switch off the AI vehicle extension completely once you've done a few times around the edge and use the standard hide help and have that work up and down the field in dead straight lines and then your windrows are all in dead straight lines as well. Um, it doesn't work with anything with windrows. I know you can use course play to do that. You just have it on another course and um, like a combine course and you can put a baler doing and have it all being done automatically. You, you won't be able to do anything fancy like that with the AI vehicle extension. It's not designed for that. It's not meant for anything fancy. It is just designed to follow the curves of the field. That's what it was originally written for. It was a program that would... It was as simple as possible, as basic as possible. Something that was designed to follow the curves of a field that was more naturally shaped than the dead straight squares that all of the giants standalone maps come with like their standard maps um like there's a lot of fields in the more realistic maps that don't have that they're not dead square like that uh, they've got unusual shapes and you don't have the option for turning off the edge of the field um and so the AI vehicle extension was a program that was written to try and address some of these things while keeping it as simple as possible. Now, 
the only other thing that you've got, and again, I know that a lot of you already know about this. You already know about the program, you use, you've used it a lot. I don't know if this is on the mod hub or if you've got to search it up from an external site. Uh, if you, if it's not on mod hub and uh, you're not sure where to get it from, check out my description and there is a link there to my um, Discord. It's a link to another video. Go to, follow the link to the other video and the link to the Discord is on that video. Um, join our Discord and you will be able to find links. You'll be able to ask people about the AI vehicle extension and where you can get it from. The only other thing that you really need to concern with is worker settings in here. Now, what I normally do is I increase the turn angle, which means that the combine, when it's working its way around the edge of the field, will turn a sharper turn before it stops, lifts up, and sort of backs around the corner. There are a couple of... You've got show the traces, so it's, it just shows the... Um, visual of where it's looking for you got the weight during unload that's a really good op um, uh, option on there it's defaulted to on so it will just stop when you go to unload as soon as you get under the spout the combine will stop i uh, turn that one off and it will carry on traveling up and down the field the first time around the outside edge of the field having that on can be very very useful um and that, that that's about it really these here, they're options that you get through the normal little control panel that comes up down through there. You've got the width offset and turn offset and things like that. And then there's a headland option on here. I've never actually played with these, so I'm not 100% sure what they do. So it just gives you something a little bit extra to play around with just to increase your options there if you want to. Uh, you can choose how precise you want the whole thing. And then you've got collision check here which i think is only for other vehicles that will make it stop if it gets close to another vehicle so anyway that is the ai vehicle extension i just thought i'd give that a little rundown because i've had a few people asking questions about it um what's the advantages why do you like it so much how is it possibly better than course play the main reason i like it more than course play is because I don't have to worry about learning a new complex program. I don't have to worry about spending ages setting anything up, um, programming courses, uh, filling out hundreds of options, and then trying desperately to see if the balance is all right and everything like that. All I have to do with this one is click a button and then set it go, and it works exactly the same way as the standard hired help the only difference being it's following the curves of the field that's what i like about it it allows me to carry on and play the game rather than having to learn how to operate the whole new complicated program in order to play the game in a very very different way um so i mean it seems like course play, uh, having done the whole series, the Alp series, we're trying to learn how to use course play, and I did have some success in getting the courses set up and so on, but I still, even after doing it and, and learning how to get the courses going and successfully having courses running and multiple machines running together, I still don't like it. I still don't like the amount of work that's involved with getting it all set up. This, I can get it going. I've got that running and I'm back to doing the farming tasks. I'm not doing anything else. I'm running around and I'm doing my farming tasks, which is what I like about the game anyway. I play the game to do farming simulator, not, um, you know, AI simulator. And that's kind of what course play feels like. It feels like you're trying to learn how to program a computer rather than learn how to, uh, rather than just... Uh, driving the machinery up and down the field so that's that's why i'm not a fan of course play and what i really love about this but anyway i've rattled on about that long enough i'm just going to unload i was thinking i could try to fill this i don't know if we're going to fill this trailer up we need another thousand liters of beans to be able to fill up this front trailer but we're gonna have a full front trailer and a part full back trailer which means that we're going to be well, this just one trailer load is worth $30,000. We know that much. One trailer load, well, we're definitely not going to have the full thousand in here. We're going to get uh, 10,000 litres, but we're not going to get another 700 litres in here. Um, 
one trailer load is worth uh, $30,000. So I've got another 30 grand coming in, which means that I have got enough money already to be able to buy the combine and buy the standard header that it will need. The only thing that we don't have is the corn header that we're going to want for the next harvest. So we may end up having to do our next harvest with just the one combine. If we get enough, we may be able to go for a second header. But I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. If we've got enough... Two and a half thousand there. If I was to go and sell that at the port right now for um, two and a half thousand ish, um, that's, that's about five grand coming in. I got four thousand liters there at a thousand per thousand liters. Uh, Fourteen hundred wheat will go up to. So we could do a bit better on that. And again, that's going to be, well, that's just going to be six, maybe seven thousand. So I'm looking at maybe twelve thousand that I could get from the sunflower and the wheat that we've got here. And the header, the corn header that we've got, that's forty-five grand, I think. Yeah, forty-five thousand. That's the one that we've got right there, which is a little bit expensive. I mean, maybe we could go with a corn champion. We could get a little one to go with the second combine. Maybe that would work. That might be an option for us. That'd be something for us to think about. Right, I'm going to jump down to you. We've now got this tractor upgraded. We've now got 105 horsepower on this little bad boy right here. Uh, we're going to run this one up to the top field. I'm going to start working up there. Cultivating is doing absolutely fantastic. And we've almost finished. So what I'm going to do there a second, I'm going to switch over to it. I'm going to turn off the hired help on here. See, I'm just using standard hired help here. I could use the AI vehicle extension, but there's no real point. There's, no, there's not going to be any benefit to me using that. Um, it's only really if there's a really irregular shaped field. And with the implement being on the three point links, it does tend to work better. Um, as I've said before, AI vehicle extension was never originally written with tractors in mind. And there have been some improvements with it with tractor work, but mostly... If you can get it to, I, the, the way I look at it is if you can get it working with the tractor and you can get it to do some of the jobs with the tractor and help out with that, then excellent. But look at that as a bonus. It's really a program designed for combining. All right. Um, and, and, and the bit about the combining is absolutely wonderful. It works really well with that. And it means that you've got your windrows sort of following the edges of the fields and, and everything's looking neat and tidy all the way through. Um, absolutely fantastic and as far as I'm concerned it's a combining program and that's what I I will stick just just use it for I don't, I don't tend to use it for anything else um, it goes it's a harvesting job and a harvesting aid and, and that's what I just sort of leave it with and I will stick with hired help with the rest of it or gen well generally try to Another thing with the AI extension is I don't think it actually works with some jobs. I have looked at trying to do some grass work like raking and that, and I don't think it actually does raking and then there's a couple of others that it just doesn't do anyway. Um, even though it will say there's an option, it just won't work. Um, so yeah, there's definite limitations when it comes to tractor work, but with combine work, beautiful i'm just following this one up through here just to make sure that it does cover all of it there's a little bit rough back there but i think i actually fixed most of the rough patches down this end so i'll let him come on all, all the way up through here like this that combine we'll run alongside the combine and we'll empty it out now i think yeah that one's fine down there. i'll leave that one where he is and then you're fine up through there it doesn't look like i've missed any patches there is a way to find out I go into here and I zoom in like that. No, it doesn't look like I've left anything behind on there. Right. Okay. Now we will take this one along here so that we can fill up this front trailer and then we can start filling up the back trailer. We're not going to get a lot, but the 30 grand that we do get, because that header is going to cost us 30,000. And that's the 30 grand that we're about to take off right now. So we're going to buy the, we're going to buy this header first. Then we will go and do our planting. So there's that bit. 
how much more we're going to get will decide whether or not we're going to be able to afford a second corn header. I mean, I might... Leave, I'm, I'm actually seriously considering leasing one. I know it costs a bit of money, to, and I didn't really... I, I don't really want to do any leasing for the series, but again, I'm not going with hard and fast rules in this series. This series is more about I just do whatever I fancy doing on the day, and uh, just so long as I can keep enjoying myself and having a little fun. So I'm not going to be completely hung up on the no leasing. I just prefer not to lease. I would prefer to only buy... But for just to speed things along a little bit in places like doing the corn harvest in a reasonable amount of time, I'm not averse to the idea of going and purchase, uh, going and leasing a second corn header just so that we can do the harvest, and then I can get rid of it afterwards. And by the time we get round to doing corn again, we could very well have upgraded our combines. However. Upgrading our combines doesn't necessarily mean that we will be getting rid of those corn headers because six meter corn headers will be good for several combines to go yet. If we look in here, uh, we're running that one right there. The natural sort of progression for combine upgrades really... I got the Rostel Mash right there. So I've, I've got the smaller one. I kind of like the idea of upgrading to the next Rostel Mash, actually. We, we go to that one right there. Uh, so if I go into there and I have a look down through, I've got the free flow. It's that Draper stream right there. It's a nine meter header. It's a Draper header as well, which means that we don't need to worry about um, any trailers for it, which will make life very easy for us. And the recommended corn header for that combine right there, the DS900, the Helianth 12000, and the HS12. It is the bigger corn header. It's not this one. That's the HS8. The HS12 is quite a bit bigger. So we would end up selling all of the headers, and we would go and buy this bad boy right here, which is a 9-meter header on there. And no, I don't want corn headers. Uh, standard headers here. The Draper stream. That's a 9 meter header as well. And the Helianthus 1200 right there, which is a 12 meter sunflower header. I'm not sure about that one. I'm really not sure about that one. But that's kind of, I'm, I'm thinking that would be my natural progression, would be to go to that one. It's a $300,000 combine. Or I could go to the John Deere. I could come, I could go to that one right there. The only problem I've got with a John Deere, the bit that I don't really like about using that John Deere as my next option, is that uh, it's not that one, is it? That's the S790. Which one am I looking at? Uh, I was looking at the T the T560 right there. This is 625X. Uh, standard headers here. That one. It's a 7.6 meter header. Could probably get away without using a header trailer. That's the bit that I'm reluctant about, is the fact we'd have to use header trailers. And I don't really want to use header trailers. Right. You over here, you've got 1,400 liters of beans on board. We're going to take a little trip down there and just get that final little strip down that end. As you can see, the AI vehicle extension works the same as standard hide help. It's too far away from the line that it was harvesting. It will just say, can't do it, mate. Don't know where it is. Although it does it less with the AI vehicle extension than it does with standard hide help. Standard hide help can park up right next to a line and still not know where it is. Whereas the AI vehicle extension does tend to be a little bit more intelligent with finding those last little um, bits that sort of got left behind. So we've got 1,500 litres of beans here, plus whatever we had in the trailer. That's not going to be too bad, really. Overall, I think that's, uh, that, that, that's going to be pretty reasonable. We don't have enough, like I said before, to get the... Uh, both the headers that we want to get, but we do have enough to go and buy a brand new combine and to be able to go and buy the header, the, the, the first header that I want to get for it. So maybe we do some leasing. 
And then we've got two combines that can work the corn harvest. Maybe we don't. Not quite sure at the moment. That's one that I'm still undecided on. I'm still trying to make my mind up on that one. Now, this combine here, I'm going to go and park it on the edge of the field. And I'm going to move it when I'm not doing other jobs. I've got other things that I want to do. I'm not going to start planting tonight. Because I need... Oh, we've actually finished this one. I'll tell you what. As I finished, I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to drive it up to the other field so that we can get the cultivating finished tonight. And then we will be able to jump into the... It's, I need the big tractor to do the planting. It's the, the, the planter that we want rather than little seed drills. So I need that track to do the planting. And I don't really want to start this late in the evening. I'd like to start first thing in the morning. We could get some fertilizer spread onto the field now that we've done the cultivating. And then go along afterwards and, and do something with it. I have had a comment saying that some people... There was only one comment, I think. It may, may have been another one. It may have been a couple. Um, saying about the plowing on the field. Right, let's drop that down there. Plowing requirements. We've got plowing requirement and lime requirement on our fields right here. Saying it needs lime and it needs plowing. Now, I've turned off the requirements for those. But there are some comments saying that um, despite me having turned them off, the fact that they are there means that the game will still be giving us the deficit... Um, we will still be having the reduced yield on there until we do something about it. It's just not going to bring it back again afterwards. However, I'm 99% sure that someone on my Discord already tested this. They had a field. They did a full heart. They turned off the requirements for it. Did a full harvest. Recorded exactly how much grain they took from it. Then they went through and did the lime and the ploughing and then they went and did another harvest and they came up with exactly the same yield um, as they did prior to doing it. And then they did it again but they had the option turned on for needing um, lime and ploughing and the yield the first time round was reduced immediately. I mean, that would be really the only test that you'd have to run is we take we we get beans and we record exactly how much we get in beans off of that field that we've got down the bottom that needs some plowing and it needs lime across a whole lot of it. We've got those requirements turned off at the moment. If we were to do a harvest off of there, record exactly how much. I don't remember how much we had in the trailer when we finished that first field. But then if we were to go through and lime and plough the field and then do it again and see if there's any difference whatsoever in yield, then we know for certain whether or not turning it on or off makes any difference. Or we could do that and then um, turn on the requirement for ploughing and lime and then do it again without actually doing the ploughing and lime. Just turn it on and then do another harvest. And see if turning it on actually affects the amount of yield that is given on the field. Like, you know, run, run, do a couple of harvests with the different settings. And see what yield, you know, what setting yields what amount. And then we can find out. I think we've relived enough glory days just for a moment. We're going to take a breather. We're going to have a little bite to eat. And then we can get back to it nice and refreshed and relive a few more glory days. There should be some names coming up right now that you can have a look at. It's names of people who are in the Great Book of Names, people who have supported this channel. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.